In this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be talking about correlations, specifically two types of correlations, Pearson's R and Spearman's Rho. And just get started. So, correlations most often refer to the extent to which two variables have a linear relationship with each other. And correl correlations are useful because they can indicate a predictive relationship that can be exploited in practice. So there are two types of correlational measures, two primary types, and these will be the ones that I'll be discussing in this tutorial. Firstly, there's Pearson's correlation, which is a parametric statistic using continuous data, and Spearman's correlation, which uses, which is a non-parametric statistic, which can use categorical data as well as continuous data. There's two primary points that one needs to note of take note of when they're conducting correlations. Firstly, it is that correlation does not imply causation. So just because there is a correlation between two variables, it doesn't mean that one variable for sure influences another variable. It just means that they have a relationship and can be influenced together by another variable which you don't know of. Secondly, a correlation shows the strength of a linear relationship but its value does not completely characterize their relationship, which again goes back to point one of not implying causation. So a correlation is type of a, a primary statistic that you can then go on to do further analysis on, such as regression. And so to start off with, let's go on to Pearson's correlation. The Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, also more simply known as Pearson's correlation, is a measure of the strength and direction of association that exists between two variables that are measured on at least an interval scale. Pearson's correlation attempts to draw a line of best fit through the data of two variables, and the Pearson's correlation coefficient, symbolized by R, indicates how far away all these data points are to this line of best fit, i.e. how well the data points fit in this new model slash line of best fit. Then there are some assumptions that need to be met when calculating a Pearson's correlation. First is that your two variables should be measured on an, at an interval or ratio level, i.e. they are continuous. Second, there needs to be a linear relationship between these two variables, and this can generally be done by um, illustrating a, a scatter plot so you can actually have a visualize the type of relationship that exists between these two variables. Assumption three, there should be no significant outliers. And this is also mentioned in the dependent samples video, so we can go, can go back to that one for more information on outliers. And outliers are simply single data points within your data that does not follow the usual pattern, and correlations are extremely sensitive to outliers. And assumption four, your variable should be approximately normally distributed. So moving on to some example data, just to show you how correlations work in a real-time example. I have 15 participants, and I'm going to be investigating the relationship between their English score and their math score. Is there a correlation between the two? And if so, what direction does it go in and how strong is this correlation? So to get there, we would start up SPSS. Okay, so once you've entered the data in SPSS, you should have one column for each variable that you want to investigate. Don't worry about those two for now. Those, that's for the next section, the non-parametrics. But once you have your data entered correctly, you can go to Analyze correlate and bivariate. Let me just reset that. Okay, now you want both of the variables that you want to determine the relationship between to be in the bivariate correlation. And because we're doing a Pearson, you only need to click on the Pearson correlation coefficient. And it's always useful to set, um, <laughs> flag significant correlations because otherwise you have to look through every single sig value and it's just a lot easier to just have it shown to you. The options oh, on the other screen for some reason. But anyway, the options here, we can calculate the means and standard deviations and the cross-product deviations and covariances. I don't really 
need to look at that to see my overall correlation. So I'm just going to click OK. Oh yeah. And if you want to have a one-tailed or two-tailed, you just click which direction you're looking for. Because I'm not sure which direction my correlation will lie, I'm just going to be using a two-tailed test of significance. And we simply click OK. And then in the output, you will get a correlation matrix with each variable in both the left-hand side and at the top. And you can determine the correlation between these two variables or more variables by just looking at this table here. So we can see the English score has a Pearson's correlation of 0.981 with math score. And this is a really high level of um, relationship and it's positive. We will get to the interpretation later. But as you can see from this table here, these two scores are very much linearly and significantly related to one another. And because there's only two variables, you would only see one correlation. So you see the same correlation value for here, but it's really just the same thing. Because that's English in this column, and then math in that column, and English in this column, and then or ma English in this row, and then math in that column. So it's just doing the same thing twice. Because the more variables you have, the larger this correlation matrix becomes. And yeah, that's pretty much how you calculate Pearson's correlation using the bivariate correlation method in SPSS. If you want to um, calculate a scatter plot, I always find that Excel is much better for graphs than SPSS. So you just enter the same data and then you highlight the two variables that you want to calculate and then you simply go to insert recommended charts and because the data are lined up in such a manner the first chart that would be recommended is the scatter plot so you can click that or you can just go down here to if I can see it ah scatter xy scatter and then you can choose the type of chart that you want. So I'll be using this one here. Oops. So from the scatter plot, you generally do this first, but I'm just showing you how it can be done. We can see that as one variable increases, so too does the other variable increase. And that shows us that it is a positive relationship and because all of these variables are quite tightly folded into an eclipse if you draw an eclipse over it the narrower the eclipse the stronger the relationship would be and the wider the eclipse the, the weaker the relationship would be because if they're all stuck together in a somewhat straight line that would show almost a perfect linear relationship which as which this uh, these data do predict. And you can do the same, the non-parametric one. So moving on to Spearman's correlation. The Spearman, ra Spearman rank order correlation coefficient, simply known as Spearman's correlation, is a non-parametric measure of the strength of the direction and association that exists between two variables measured on at least an ordinal scale. So if you've forgotten, the difference between nominal and ordinal scale is that an ordinal scale has ranks, so kind of like a Likert scale, for instance, one being the least and seven being the most. There's a difference between those two numbers as opposed to just being in two different groups, such as male, female. And the Spearman's correlation is noted by the symbol R, some subscore S, or more generally, the Greek letter P, pronounced rho. The test is used for either ordinal variables or for continuous data that has failed the assumptions necessary for conducting the Pearson's product moment correlation. So if you have continuous data that is um, non-parametric or ordinal data, then you can use a Spearman's correlation as opposed to Pearson's. So there are only two assumptions that need to be met for Pearson's correlations. Assumption one is that the two variables should be measured on an ordinal interval or ratio scale. Assumption two, there needs to be a, a monotic relationship between the two variables. And a monotic relationship exists when either the variables increase in value together, or as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. And you can also determine this by a scatter plot using the same method I showed in Excel. 
earlier. So some example data, I just have 15 participants and an hour studied as the one variable and exam score as the other variable. Now I want to determine if uh, there's a relationship between an hour studied and the exam performance. Now hour studied may seem like a continuous variable but because there's less than 15 points it would generally be considered ordinal. So 15 points or more on a scale and it is continuous, less than 15 it is ordinal generally. Okay so let's move on to the SPSS side of things. Alright so once the data is entered into SPSS again one column per variable you can simply go to analyze correlate and bivariate enter the two variables that you want into the variable box for, for this example it will be our studies and exam score and make sure here you want to click on the Spearman correlation coefficient you can click on all of them at the same time and it will calculate um, each individual correlation but we're just focusing on Spearman for this example. Again, I want to flag for significant correlations and I want it to be a two-tailed test for significance. So, okay. It's a very similar correlation matrix to the, the parametric correlation, but as you can see, SPSS does differentiate between the two, as this one will be a non-parametric calculation. Again, we can see that there's a very strong and positive correlation very significant as well between our studied and exam score. This is all fictitious data, so I'm just I entered it in order to get these results, just for an example's sake. So we have a correlation score of or Spearman's row score of 0.912, where one is the highest and negative one is the lowest. 0 0.192 is a very strong and positive correlation score indicating a strong level of association between these two variables. Again, we can't say that our study does cause a higher exam score, but it does lead us to think along those lines that the more you study, the, more your, the higher your exam performance would be. But we have to do a linear regression in order to accurately determine just how much studying is needed to have an increase in score. But yeah, for the purposes of this tutorial, this is the final output that we would be needing. So as I mentioned briefly previously, a correlation ranges, well regardless of the correlation, the maximum range is minus 1 to positive 1. And exactly minus 1 is a perfect negative linear relationship. Negative 0.7 is a strong negative linear relationship, negative 0.5 is a moderate negative relationship, 0 0.3 is a weak negative linear relationship, and 0 means there's absolutely no correlation or relationship association between these two variables that you are investigating. And when you go into the positives, it's the exact same interpretation, but instead of a negative, it's a positive relationship. So 0 0.3 would be a positive, a weak positive linear relationship. 0.5 would be a strong positive relationship, 0.7 would be a strong, I mean 0.5 would be a moderate positive relationship and 0.7 would be a strong positive relationship and 1 exactly would be a perfect positive linear relationship and you pretty much don't get perfect linear relationships in normal data but perhaps in some type of experimental data you may just get a perfect linear relationship either negative or positive. But ours, our correlations that we calculated would be classified as a strong positive linear relationship, a very strong positive linear relationship. Again, 0.9 of the correlation or, 0 point, or negative 0 0.9, you generally won't find them in normal data. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on stats.